Hi everyone, you're with Lucy and welcome to my watercolour channel, my mixed media channel, anything crafty and arty and I just love to do it. So today I'm going to be showing you how to do this lovely little picture with the little birds. Now one of the things I want to talk about in um, all the painting that I'm doing at the moment is trying to loosen up, trying to just have a bit of fun with it, just play. So what I've done today is a little picture, which was these little birds. I've changed them. I've made them with longer legs. I've kind of made them a bit kooky. And one of the reasons I've done that is because it it's really good to play when we just take everything really seriously it can sometimes stop us creating and stop us progressing with our art so today I'm going to show you how to do these little birds it's a very simple process you'll be able to knock it out in like 15 20 minutes if you want to, to give it a try and I'm using my trusty little stick and ink to ink them in so give this a go it's a bit of fun if you like my channel please make sure you subscribe and click that bell because I'm going to be doing lots and lots more videos and I hope you enjoy them so let's get started So I just love these little birds and I really wanted to paint them. So I'm going to be using some watercolour pencils. And in my last video where I did the iris, I also used some Prismacolor pencils. So again, we're going to be using a mixture of Prismacolor pencils, watercolour pencils, and also our watercolour paint, paints. And I'm using, the paints that I'm using today are the St. Petersburg White Knights, which um, I really quite like to use for um, painting. So what I'm gonna start with is a really light sketch of the birds. And so, you know, this is not, this is again, not going to be an accurate um, picture. I'm just gonna put the little loggy thing that they're sitting on. I'm just using the picture as a very light reference and I'm going to start with this middle bird because he's kind of standing quite tall and he's just like a bit of a round shape with a head on it. Now, I what I'm using now is the watercolour pencils. So the, because I'm using watercolour pencils, when I start to paint, this will actually bleed in and I don't have to worry too much about what's actually happening. Okay, so I'm drawing him very lightly. I don't want my picture to have like very dark lines because of course they're harder to get rid of. So this little bird here is a little bit lower. And again, he's just a bit of a powder puff, isn't he? And I'm just putting his little beak in. So again, this is not at all um, where I'm trying to be super accurate. Okay, now this one here is, I'm just gonna put his little head in first and then his body around it and his little tail up in the air. So the big things, again, I'm looking at, and I think that I, what I really want to speak about is that we really want to look at what interests us in the picture. And for me, it was the positions. I love the positions these birds are in. They're kind of looking all over the place. They look very busy and very, very cute. So, you know, everyone has a different thing that, that interests them in a picture, and this is where we actually find it. So now I'm looking here. Now this one here, I'm just going to do his head. He's not quite as fluffy and he's going to be a little bit more blue, but just like these would be um, the adult birds. And just making sure that I've got that kind of color happening. And what's really lovely about this is that his little beak is sticking out here too. So just making sure I've got some of the color areas in. So it doesn't, like I said, no one's going to ever see your original picture. So don't be really harsh on yourself when you're drawing because so long as it looks like a little bird. And like I said, this one's going to be a very loose painting again. 
I'm a firm believer that learning to paint loose um, does actually help you learn about doing things accurately down the track because you kind of learn to express a little bit more and let go and that's always a good thing. So I'm just putting his leg in. So there we have them. We've got our little birds and I'm quite happy with that. That one's got a little wing sort of there. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Prismacolor pencils. Now the Prismacolor pencils are wax-based pencils. So these ones here, because they're wax-based, they're going to repel the water. So when I start doing my watercoloring, I don't have to worry too much because these are going to repel that water. So the thing I'm going to do here is actually do some of the dark areas on this little bird so I've got that kind of that shape already worked out these little eyes there and you can always add some gouache and that later so I'm very much just putting the color in where I think it needs to be so looking at my picture he's got a little bit here on his um, leg oh, on his um, wing and then he's got some more here on his chest so when I color over there, the little white areas, they will actually fill in. So that, that's kind of nice too. So then I'm looking at this little bird over here. And, you know, you could just paint black in later, but I'm really kind of finding it nice to be using the paints together. So that's that color there. Then I do want to keep a certain amount of white. So I'm just finding my white pencil. So a white Prismacolor pencil is going to give me um, a resist um, effect. So I'm just going to around the edge of the log where I want it to have a little bit of a highlight. You can see the highlights. I'm just going to put a bit of the white now that's a little hard to see obviously but you just got to kind of work what you can see and because I'm going to do it in brown you could even use a slightly darker pencil and I'm just putting some basic shapes in to create the log effect I'm not looking for this to be perfect so I'm just doing some scribbles to get that log effect there now I'm also going to want his legs to stay quite light so I'm just doing a little bit of white on the legs and looking at the picture and going oh, I'd like the ends of his tail to stay quite light so it looks like the Sun's on them remembering that the blue is going to blend in so the blue will blend in and uh, when I wet it okay let's start painting so I'm going to do the log first and the log I'm going to do in some Payne's gray so I'm just grabbing a bit of Payne's gray Payne's gray neutral tint and then I'm going to mix a bit of brown in it And I'm doing a light wash and just kind of painting that there and you'll see as it starts to dry these little lines will still show up because they're waxy you can't see it right now but it comes up quite well as it starts to dry especially where there's areas of white So just kind of making this rough kind of log-like thing and I'm just going to do a few little spatters on here too. On this log, just to make it interesting. Could be a bundle of sand. Okay, now let's think about the birds. So two of the birds I want to make 
blue and I'm going to use some cerulean blue to do the little heads on this one. And I'm not pre-wetting, I'm just using the cerulean blue. And you can see here I'm not taking a lot of care to paint it, I'm being quite rough with it. And then I'm going to take some ultramarine blue and just going to paint his little body in in that ultramarine blue and one of the things I've noticed about this little bird is that it's lighter here than it, and, and lighter there than it is underneath so I'm just gonna put that little bit of lightness there and what you can do to make them a little bit more fuzzy is just use your wet brush and just blend it out a little bit with your wet brush and that just gives you a little soft edge on the bird which is very cute now I'm just taking a little bit of cerulean blue and mixing it with a little bit of ultramarine and this little bit here I'm just making sure that it's a little bit lighter okay so I've got the basic color in for that one so again here this is a little bit lighter here tiny bit lighter on his chest and then we're going to the ultramarine blue you can see here I'm not over brushing anything I'm keeping it quite loose and again I'm just using my damp brush to soften those edges now the edge for where the wing is is a hard edge so I'm not going to soften that edge and then I'm just looking at my little fellow here and his beak should be the blue goes right up to his beak so as you're painting you can do corrections to your work and that is a little fuzzy there so just a bit of a damp clean brush to cause a nice bit of fuzziness now these little birds even though they kind of are a little browny gray i want to make them an interesting color so i'm just going to use a little bit of raw sienna you can use raw sienna or yellow ochre and i'm just going to paint them very washy light with this color okay and same as this middle one so <laughs> all of this is very very quick okay and this one here he's kind of light under here but a little bit dark at the top so I've got this, I'm even, I'm making this all wet and taking my damp brush, drying it off and just softening this edge. And that also bleeds that bit of blue paint a bit. And the blue paint actually becomes a useful thing. It becomes like a shadow. Okay, so now taking a bit of burnt umber. And I'm looking at my little birds and his face is darker towards his eye and he's got a little dark head and my computer is showing me puddles but it doesn't actually have puddles on it so a little bit here and then his little head here And so you can see here this is all undercoat and a lot of people look at this and go oh my god what is she painting how is that going to ever turn into anything that looks like anything this is where with painting we've got to have a little bit of faith faith in the process so now looking at that little tail that tail has a tiny bit of blue in it so i'm going to mix some blue in my brown and i'm just going to paint that little tail in because it's kind of a bluey brown color it's an interesting color and this one here also has some bluey gray in it 
and that one it does too but this one also if I look at my picture doesn't just have the bluey gray in it it also has a little bit of a darker blue in so I'm just going to take a little bit of another blue and that also helps separate the tail and I'm going to do that same color on this tail and add just a little bit of Payne's grey to get it in the distance. So we've kind of got our shapes and our little birds in and what I want to do now is do some splatters. So you just want some soft splatters. Don't worry too much if you get them on the birds, it doesn't matter. You can, um, I'm just going to add some little green splatters as well and Okay, so there I have my splatters, I have my little birds, they're undercoated, and I'm looking at this here and going, I really don't like the colour that much. So I am actually going to add a little bit of blue and green to this. Okay, so that so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to dry this. nearly dry it's pretty much as, as dry as I need it to be and I'm going to use my ink again with my stick so I'm going to take the stick and dip it into the ink and then I'm going to look at my birds and kind of sketch in over the top of the color that I've put in so I'm going to do his little beak And I'll kind of scratch it in a little bit, do the dark area here, and this little eye comes in there. This is where you can be really kind of rough and a bit of fun. Then I'm going to put his little leg in. Now his leg has is dark on one side and has a highlight so what I'm doing here is just putting in one side and then I'm going to take paint and do in the other side so now this little fellow here he has cute little eyes and a little beak coming down here and even you know that's not quite dry but it's leaving like a nice wet pattern and I'm just to fluff him out I'm just going to add a little bit of fluffy shape to his head just so we can define between his head and his body and we can add a little bit of shadow to that too once we get to a certain stage. I'm just going to do the trunk a little bit. The good thing about inking now is that we're going to use some of this ink 
while it's still wet to add further detail. Get the legs in. And don't forget the little feet. So I've got some basic shape in there. They don't even look like the birds in the picture, but I'm really not concerned. So what I'm going to do now, while this is wet, wait a second, I'll just add a little bit more black around this little fellow. Just want to kind of give him a soft look. Now, we've got this black on here now. So what you can do with your brush is cause a little bit of shadow, a little bit of difference between them. Okay, that will lighten as it dries. Take a little bit of that. And now if you're using your watercolour brush for this, do make sure you wash it out thoroughly because it will stain your brush. This is an, like an Indian ink that I'm using. So what I'm doing here is putting the shadows between and then I'm also looking at the brown in their little faces. I'm going to make a little watery wash of that and I just want to make their faces a little bit more interesting basically put some dark in them not trying to make this look like the real picture what I'm trying to do is get the feeling of the picture and I think there's something quite different between trying to be accurate and trying to get the feeling of something and you know it's sometimes that's all we need because we really are clever creatures so I'm just going to put a bit of that wrong end of my stick it's terrible when you get the wrong end of the stick isn't it okay so now I'm going to take, also with my damp brush, I'm just going to add a little bit more colour to the legs. And we're also looking now like, okay, even though that they're not real birds, it always helps to have little shadows and things. So under his belly here, he's going to be darker because there's no light there. So I'm just going to add a little bit of Payne's Grey there. Now here you could use Payne's Grey or you could use Indigo and Indigo is a good choice because they're already blue. So we're just making them a little bit darker blue. You can see here it's quite dark between here and here and even though they are quite abstract you can still create um, an image of movement. And I'm just going to get my gouache because nothing looks right until you get a lovely highlight in the eyes and I'm just going to use my thin brush and pick up a little bit of white tiny highlight tiny highlight oops that's a little bit too wet still so I just use gouache for the highlights that's that eye is too wet to put a highlight on but I'm gonna put a little one on there a little one on there wait for them to dry. Let me just dry them off a little. OK, 
okay, so now I'm looking at them and I'm saying to myself, oh my gosh, they are a little bland. These middle ones are a little bland and I know that that's the colour they are. So what can I do to make them more colourful? I'm just going to take a bit of orange. There's no orange in the picture that I'm looking at, but I'm going to take a bit of orange and just add a little bit of brightness to them. And this is where you can use your creative licence and just add a bit of colour. I just want them to be a little bit brighter than they are, even their little heads. And I just find that that looks better. So this is where you experiment. Don't just go, oh, it's not right. What can we do? This is where you have to experiment. And even here, I think I'm going to add a little bit more texture and darkness to where they're standing. Okay. Maybe even a bit of blue. And a perfect colour to add to this is just a bit of red into this log. Just see, it just livens it up. It's amazing when we use just add a bit of colour here and there. And I'm going to add some of these little red flicks as well. Just to, to liven it up a little bit. Then I can take, get my gouache again, where the eyes are dry enough, get that little highlight in. That's still wet, that one. Anyway, you can get the gist of what I'm doing there. And all I'm going to do too is mix the gouache with a bit of water. And just to fluff this little guy up, I'm just going to put a little bit of white gouache in a kind of fluffy pattern here. And just because these are the central birds, I'm just putting that little extra detail in. A little bit on their beaks. If you make any mistake, like his beak is way too big, I'm just going to take some gouache and just make his beak shorter. Fixed. And little things I'd look at then, I'll make a little bit of highlight on his head and some highlights on the feathers. And this one kind of needs little feet to, because it looked a little bit like he doesn't belong here. So I'm just going to take the ground a little bit or the log a little bit this way so he belongs somewhere. Now I'm also going to put a shadow underneath them. So here under each bird I'm going to do just a little bird shaped shadow. Okay, little shadow and his little chin. And you can see he has a little bit more shape. Now let's try that eye again. Oops, I've just given him a black eye. Hang on. That's what you shouldn't do, but everything is fixable. Give him a little smaller eye, little bits of fur on his head. It's amazing how you can fix something quite easily. A little bit of black here to fix his eye. And then a tiny white spot in that eye. Okay, so this is just a very simple little exercise. It's, it's about trying to get the shape, trying to get the movement. If you were going to do a major painting, you might even do all of this first just to play around with colour and go, what colours do I really want this to be? Do I want them to be natural colours and be absolutely perfect? Or am I happy enough to, to do something a little bit different, you know? Create a bit of 
change to it. I don't always believe that we need to keep everything perfectly, I suppose, honest to the picture, but this to me is kind of your creative way. So I know this bird has an awfully weird face at the moment and I am going to fix that up so that he's even got his face at a slightly wrong angle. But hey, he kind of looks cute.